Welcome. Welcome, one and all, to A Late Show and Puppet Theater. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. That'll make sense later. Now, I hope you all had a good weekend. Not that I'm conceding that there was a weekend. That's for the courts to decide, obviously. The coronavirus continues to surge across this country, and I'll tell you all about it in the latest in my viral segments, Catch a Third Wave, Endless Bummer. Hot-blooded, check it and see. You'll have a fever of 103. <laughs> yeah, I love that song. No, stop Get now. out! Get <laughs> out! The bad is getting worse. This week alone, the U.S. added one million new coronavirus cases, but top MAGA scientists have a solution. And the worst part is, it, it may not be the worst, because the holidays are fast approaching. As one hospital director warned, Christmas and New Year's Eve parties could lead to a giant intergenerational cluster. Normally, if you want to see a giant intergenerational cluster, you have to ask Santa for Pornhub Premium. So I've heard. Local officials are scrambling to stop the spread. Los Angeles Mayor Eric Garcetti issued a statement telling citizens, cancel those vacation plans right now. Do not sneak in other households for Thanksgiving. I'm going to go ahead and say that second thing is just good advice under any circumstances. There's a reason you don't hear this around the holiday table. Oh, my turn? Uh... I guess I'm thankful that you left the basement door unlocked. <laughs> Thankfully, there's advice from people who know stuff. For instance, the CDC is suggesting Americans have Thanksgiving outside. Okay, late November could get a little nippy. So instead of a turkey, I recommend serving each guest two Cornish game hens, one for each hand. Now, once you're outside, the CDC has plenty of additional safety recommendations, such as use disposable items. Like utensils. I'm sorry. Why? Do other people share their silverware at Thanksgiving? Nana, could you pass the peas? Also your fork. These carrots just aren't the same without the sweet zing of fix -a dent <laughs> I don't understand that at all. I don't. I like this. This is nice. CDC also recommends bring your own food. So just tell your aunt that you can't have any of her hot fruit casserole this year because it's Dr. Fauci's orders. No other reason. I love hot fruit. They also advise using single-use options like salad dressing and condiment packets. I knew that drawer of condiment packets would come in handy someday. Uncle Carl, uh, here's the mashed potatoes and a packet of teriyaki sauce from 1997. It's got a picture of Frasier on it. Remember Frasier days at Panda Express? There you go. I want to shake that up. Got a little separated. So, how did things get so bad with COVID? Well, for starters, there's a complete vacuum of leadership, and not just because the president sucks. It turns out he has not attended a coronavirus task force meeting in at least five months. Okay, so it's, it's November 16th. Five months ago was June 16th. I'm sorry, what was the name of the op-ed that the head of the coronavirus task force, Mike Pence, wrote in the Wall Street Journal? There isn't a coronavirus second wave. Nope, just one giant tsunami of criminal stupidity. Dr. Fauci, excuse me, ooh. Ooh, that joke backed up on me. <laughs> Dr. Fauci tried to explain that the president is still getting vital information, kind of, sort of. When we have our task force meeting, it's run, as you know, by Vice President Pence. And the vice president then translates that to the president himself. God, I would love to be a fly on the wall or a fly on the Pence when he tried to translate this information. Mr. President, this is Mr. Bad Newsburger. He has some information to share with you. Oh, this is America's darkest hour. <laughs> I'm delicious. We might need this again. That was the puppet part. Thankfully, there is some good COVID news. This morning, this morning, pharmaceutical giant Moderna announced that according to preliminary results, 
their coronavirus vaccine is 94.5% effective. So the good news is there are at least two COVID vaccines on the horizon. The bad news is the president may not let every American have them, because here's what he said on Friday. As soon as April, the vaccine will be available to the entire general population, with the exception of places like New York State. So, New Yorkers, you'll have to get the vaccine in New Jersey, but, you know, just pick it up on your way back from getting your new legal weed, which preliminary test show is 94.5% dank. So the president is threatening to withhold life-saving vaccines from his home state. But don't you worry, he has a good reason. Governor Cuomo hurt his feelings. For political reasons, the governor uh, decided to say, and, you know, I don't think it's good politically. I think it's very bad from a health standpoint, but... Uh, he wants to take his time with the vaccine. He doesn't trust where the vaccine's coming from. What the governor actually said is that New York, like California, Nevada, Oregon, and Washington State, wants to verify the findings of the FDA. For some reason, Cuomo doesn't automatically trust the guy who told us to drink bleach and jam sunshine up our butts. <laughs> Speaking of which, it's been almost two weeks since the election. The president still can't face that he lost. And I'll give you the latest in tonight's edition of our segment that just won't leave. You voted for me, and you voted for me. You voted for me, you voted for me. You voted for me. The road from me. the White House. You voted for me. Well, in a stunning result, the Peach State, Georgia, has finally been called making the ultimate tally in the Electoral College. Biden winning with 306 to 232. Coincidentally, the exact same number of electoral votes as 2016. So uh, how could you describe that final result? We won by a landslide. A landslide? A landslide. A landslide. A landslide. A tremendous uh, landslide. And the landslide brought you down. I also had sex with Christy McVie. <laughs> isn't that, isn't that, everybody in that band was having sex with each other, right? Sure, okay. Who's the guitar guy? Lindsay, it was, I'm sorry, it was Lindsay Buckingham I had sex with. It was very dark, it was very dark. All I know is Mick Fleetwood can keep time, man. <laughs> Biden, Biden flipped five states. Georgia, Arizona, Michigan, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin. Joe flipped states in the Sun Belt and the Rust Belt. I guess there's nothing suburban women like more than a reversible belt. Faced with the overwhelming what actually happened, yesterday, the now lame duck president quacked of Joe Biden. He won because the election was rigged. You had me at, he won. The rest of it was just got me all warm and dreamy. But then the denier in chief declared Baxi's tweeting, I won the election. That is the digital equivalent of waking up to find grandpa screaming on the lawn in his underwear. You can't give him a standard mental cognition test because the first question is who is the president? Now, regardless of what the soon to be not president tweets, the election is over and there should be no doubts about the security and fairness of the voting. In fact, federal and state government officials issued a joint statement Thursday saying that this year's election was the most secure in American history. Kind of ironic since it defeated the most insecure president in American history. But one member of the administration is coming to their senses. National Security Advisor and Anderson Stuper, Robert O'Brien. Today, O'Brien dared to say this about a possible transition to a Biden administration. We may have policy disagreements, but uh, look, if, if the Biden-Harris uh, uh, ticket is determined to be the winner, and, and it's, you know, obviously things look that way now, uh, we'll have a very professional transition from the National Security Council. There's no question about it. Now, there's no surprise that O'Brien is starting to ease the big man out of the White House. Before serving as National Security Advisor, he was Special Presidential Envoy for Hostage Affairs. So we all know how this is gonna end. <clears throat> Sir, sir, leave the building now and we will fulfill your list of demands. <clears throat> Legal immunity, a highly inaccurate bathroom scale, a bottomless bucket of KFC, you get to meet the colonel, a letter from your dad saying that he loves you, a letter from the colonel saying that he loves you, 
and a second, even taller skyscraper in New York with your name on it that also, if I'm reading this right, has boobs. Please come out, sir. Meanwhile, instead of arguing with the toddler, Biden is calmly preparing to take the reins of the government. Unfortunately, the government has been cooperating. He's been denied intelligence briefings, office space, and funding thanks to head of the General Services Administration and woman explaining why she's going to call the cops on this cookout, Emily Murphy. Murphy was installed by the president in 2017 and has remained a loyalist, even though Biden has an insurmountable lead. Murphy has so far refused to certify Biden as the election's winner as the president attempts to overturn the election result in court. That court case is, of course, Snowball's Chance v. Hell. But Murphy doesn't seem to think this administration will last much longer because a new report says that she recently sent a message to an associate inquiring about employment opportunities in 2021. That is not fair. She won't let America move on, but she's searching for the next job? Well. She should find something suitable on enableamonster.com. This weekend, uh, there was something out there called the Million MAGA March, a protest in support of the president's false claim that he was cheated out of an election win. Now, the thing about uh, the Million MAGA March, it wasn't quite a million. Instead, attendees numbered somewhere in the tens of thousands range. 10,000, a million, it's just how they count. You round up for marches, you round down for COVID deaths. It's all in their textbook, basic arithmaga. One person clearly not in the pocket of big reality, White House press secretary and third sister from Frozen who actually wanted the town to die. <laughs> Kaylee McEnany. McEnany tweeted, more than one million marchers for president descend on the swamp in support. So the administration ends as it began, lying about crowd size. They've come full circle. That's just basic geomaga. Of course, they have the right to march, and it's understandable to want to have one last maga. No matter who you are, it's no fun to lose. And if you're having trouble hanging up your maga hat, here are some tips that might help you cope with your loss from some people who know how it feels. And now a message to Donald Trump voters from Hillary Clinton voters. So your candidate lost. Sorry. We know it feels terrible. We've been there. But you've got to move on. So however you're feeling, here are some coping tips that helped us get through the last four years. You've got to feel your feelings. We know it's embarrassing. So find a safe space, like maybe a Buffalo Wild Wings. Practice self-care. Take a bubble bath. Maybe cry while you listen to whatever Pandora plays when you search acoustic sad. Is it wrong I still love you? Maybe I don't know how to heal. Practice direct action. Contact your government representatives. For best results, don't threaten to kidnap them. Still crushed? Then it's time to break out your blender. We recommend a bottle of bourbon and a pint of fudge brownie ice cream to make what we called breakfast. Or if you're feeling really overwhelmed, just tweet any vague statement of hope followed by the hashtag resistance. We won't be needing it anymore, Snowflake. By the way, snowflakes are beautiful and unique. Not sure how it got turned into an insult. We don't mean it that way. So chin up. We'll see you in four years. In the meantime, you can still drink from your liberal tears mug. Just remember, now they're tears of joy. We've got a great show for you tonight. My guest is Jake Tapper. But when we return, I'll tell you about a country that's almost as bad at handling COVID as we are. Stick around.